trying this again hopefully for the last time i've been meaning to upload this tier list i'm pretty sure since last month and i mean i've had this idea in my head since i finished common rider w but now that common rider o's is over i definitely want to do this one so i can also do a tier list for common rider o's so as you guys can see here i have not one tier list but three uh this so i found three tier lists that i feel like basically gives the general idea of how i feel about most of the important things in Kamen Rider W. So one of the tier lists goes over the different suits of Kamen, in Kamen Rider W, another one goes over the dopants of Kamen Rider W, and the last one goes over the characters of Kamen Rider W. Now the way that I want to do it is because there are so many characters, the ones that are like at the very bottom are going to be the ones that I don't even remember. Those are the ones that not only had no impact, but just like its memorability is just down to zero. Those ones, I'm just going to skip in the video. I'm going to edit them out because if I can't remember them, there's not really much I can say about them. As for the other ones, we have C, which, which would be things that I don't like. So I remember them, but I don't like them. But the reason why they're not at D is because at least I have like a reaction to them. You know, they're not just straight up boring or forgettable. They're actual things that I remember and just disliked when I saw them in the series. B would be okay. So those are the things that, you know, not bad, not good. Just, you know, it was okay. It was a good way to fill up time um a would be really good i really like what i put there i love every single time i see it on screen i i get hyped whenever like either it's common it's a common writer and they're fighting or it's a character and they're talking and interacting with the main characters or it's a dopant that i really really liked and really really uh remembered and cared about and then S would be reserved for one thing. So if it's a common writer suit, it's the one common writer suit that I love ab above all else. It's the one character I love ab above all else. It's the one dopant that I love above all else. So that tier is reserved for only one, the very, very best. So now that I got the rules out of the way, let's have some fun and try and figure out where all of these things go and in which order so like i said we're going to start with the common writers of common writer w this is only going over the live action series so we aren't going to be getting any manga or you know any supplementary characters it's just gonna it's just going to stick to the common writer uh series and the common writer specials uh that we got for w okay so we're starting off with the classic common writer w suit i don't know about anybody else but my probably my favorite suit for most common riders is their original suit it's just the classic it's the one that we see this common rider suit is similar to like the original spider-man suit or the original superman suit there's just no beating it so i gotta put it in a for sure like i love every single time i see it on screen this one we have is the boss's common rider common rider skull now this is gonna sound a little weird but i like the fact that he's wearing clothes like i know you know all of these are armor you know like they're not naked but i don't know the fact that he has like a hat and scarf it's just a good way to like differentiate from all the other common riders and when we saw him without his scarf and hat in the o's special i was kind of like something isn't right something doesn't feel right like he needs the scarf and the hat to match on top of that it just looks really badass and it really fits the boss's like manly man character so yeah, I'm going to be putting this guy at A2. Uh, the next one we have is Kamen Rider Eternal. This is uh, the first version that we saw in the Eternal movie. Uh, I forgot who, who wears it. I don't really remember a lot of the characters' names. I'm sorry. It's been a while. Uh, but I do remember how badass he, he looked. Uh, I like the like utility belt attached to his chest that can hold all of the Gaia memories. I love the long, the super long cape. It's just really, really good. I'm definitely gonna put this one as A uh, because like I said, he's just, it just looks really, really cool. The next one though, this is gonna be the first one that we don't put in A and that is the Kamen Rider's Eternal suit that we see in the Eternal movie, the, uh, the prototype before we get to see the final version. Uh, this was the one that was um, worn by that Foundation member or Organization X or Foundation X. I forgot what they're called. Uh, yeah, I I don't like it. I mean, for starters, he's naked. <laughs> he's he's common writers naked. Like it's 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 kind of weird not seeing him without the cape and everything. And also, he has like those blue flames that don't fit. Uh, or like you no, know, he had the red flames uh, that don't look as cool as the blue flames. Um, and yeah, I just I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't look right. You know, it, it's like I said about uh, Kamen Rider's skull without his hat and scarf. 
because I'm used to it. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going to put this one in C because I remember it. It's not forgettable. It's just, eh, you know? The next one we have is the Joker Common Rider 2. I honestly really like this one. Uh, like, it's it's hard for for these two sides to be split because uh, the original just looks so good. But I think uh, Joker really pulls it off. Like, he, he feels heavy. And it could have to do with his power set, too, because he's supposed to be, like, you know, a power, a power suit. So, yeah, I really, really like it. Uh, I'll put it as B. Uh, meanwhile, maybe because we haven't seen it as much, but... Philip's suit without Joker, like wind without Joker, just looks really weird to me. Uh, I don't know. He looks like I like he looks a little bit like which makes sense because it's wind, but he looks really like not weak, but like light. You know, he doesn't have that heavy, heavy feeling like uh, Joker does. So I think I'm gonna put him in C. I wonder if I'm making sense with how I'm like describing this because it's like it, it's just a feeling that you get when you see these suits you know like when you have whenever you think about like your favorite suit like you have that feeling you know those memories it's like when you smell something and you get like a memory from 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 that smell it's similar to like when I look at these suits like I see them and I have a feeling like, in my gut like how I feel about them if you guys have seen my Kamen Rider W reactions you should already know where I'm gonna put uh, the, uh, fire, uh, metal common Rider suit. It has to go in S. It has to go in S. I love this suit. For starters, I'm a big fan of both staffs. You, you know, it probably goes back to the fact that I'm, like, a big fan of Robin, uh, and he has, like, a bow staff, and he's always, he was swinging around during, like, you know, Teen Titans. And then mix that in with fire, like, you just get a lot of really cool moves. And we saw that in, uh, the Kamen Rider series. If I had to choose what common rider like ability I was I got like if if somebody gave me a belt and was like okay you get two common rider Gaia memories which ones do you want I'll be like I choose heat and metal so that way I can have like the cool bow staff and the heat powers as well lunar trigger I think it's called uh this one was okay I can't really complain like it's something that I wasn't upset about when I saw it on screen well at the same time it wasn't like super duper hyped but it had some cool movesets um, like what, how he's able to uh, fire and the bullets would like, you know, swerve and curve because of Lunar. I think it was an okay suit for sure. Uh, but next we have Joker Fang. This is another one which honestly is okay. Um, it's it's a really cool design and I like how Philip is able to uh, take the helm when he's wearing, when, when they choose that suit. It's different from what we're used to with the other Kamen Rider W suits. But like, I, I mean, I don't know, like, it's not as impressive as I think a lot of people make it out to be. Like, it looks vicious and everything, and it looks buff, but eh, I don't know. It also gives me, like, the Power Ranger white vibes from that dinosaur uh, Power Ranger series, I think. Uh, I don't know. I, I get some of that vibes from this, too. But other than that, like, it's not, I don't think it's enough to go into A rank, and I don't dislike it, so I'm not going to put it in C rank. Then after that, we have Kamen Rider W extreme this is the one that uh you know this is the big one i got really hyped when i saw it in a uh, futo pi and they they really overpowered that suit for sure uh i think it's okay <laughs> i mean like the power set is really really cool you know but for one thing the design kind of just doesn't do it for me uh it just makes the suit look a lot more clunky and like i said the classic looked oak looked just fine to me so i'm also gonna put this one in b uh like i said abilities are really cool but i'm just like uh and also like the shield is kind of like i don't know like awkward looking if that makes sense like how he holds it's kind of weird i will say though the eternals coming rider w extreme i fuck with that one for sure that one looks really really cool the gold fits with like the black and green and the wings, when we saw that in Eternals and in the O series, in this O special, I was absolutely hyped. I will put this in A for sure because, maybe because also we don't see it as much, but when we do see it, it's like, it gets like really, really hyped scenes. So yeah, I'm going to definitely put that one in A. And then we're down to the three uh, Ryuji uh, Kamen Rider suits. Uh, for starters, we have its classic one. This one is okay. It's a little bit bulky um but like it's 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 a good design he can turn in he's basically like a transformer i really like that i'm gonna put this one in b as you know okay i am gonna put the uh this his second gear in a though 
That one I'm going to put in A. I'm a huge fan of speedsters. So, like, him having, like, super speed and stuff like that running around, I think that's really, really cool. And finally, we have his Gear 3 yellow suit. This one I feel like we didn't really get that much of. Uh, we only really got one special about it. And, like, I know I said, like, you know, we don't really... The fact... One of the reasons why I put uh, the gold uh, Kamen Rider W suit in A is because we don't we didn't really see it as much. But while the gold suit got a lot of hype scenes when we did see it, we only got one scene with um, this gear, and it wasn't really that hype, if I remember it. Uh, it came from a really good movie. I like Ryuji's movie, but I don't know. I just, it was okay, I guess. I'll probably put it in, I guess I'll put it in B. You know, it's okay. So yeah, this is my ranking for the common writers of W. There have been none that I have forgotten. They've all had at least some kind of memorable opinion, uh, impression on me. So I think that's a pretty good win for sure. Uh, like I said, my my favorite one is uh, Heat Metal. Uh, like I said, if I had a chance, if I had a choice to choose what kind of common writer I would want to be, it would probably be that suit. Uh, my least favorite would be the Eternals one. Yeah, we're gonna move on now to the characters. So these are not all of the characters of Kamen Rider W, of course, there are so many, but I am not gonna sit down and do a tier list for all of them. So instead, we're just gonna be focusing on the very important characters. Um, I don't remember all of their names though, that's the one thing, but I do remember them, if that makes sense. So we're gonna start off with Akiko. Akiko was honestly a very big surprise for me. Um, looking back, I've seen Kamen Rider uh, Kiva, Kamen Rider Kuga, Kamen Rider uh, 01, Kamen Rider Build, and like one episode of, I forgot that one, about, like it's like a Kamen Rider who wants to be a king or something. Uh, Z-O, I think? Um, and then besides that, that, that's about it. And honestly, Akiko is one of the best female characters in Kamen Rider period. Uh, at least the ones that I've seen. She is just, she just has such a big personality and like such a wacky personality, and she gets in there too. Like I like the storyline that she is trying to be like her father and be a detective in her own way. Um, I like how she takes the job seriously and she's like, okay, I'm here to protect my client. And I do like the jokes. I mean, like she is great. She got those two slippers. She got multiple slippers, and she's just like dealing them out mainly to show through. Uh, but I just—it's funny, and it's—it's—it's it's, it's out there, and like they're not afraid to make Akiko, like like she's cute, but at the same time she is like batshit sometimes, and I love that. So I'm definitely gonna put Akiko in A for sure. The next character we have here is from the Eternals movie. I'm pretty sure, and this was the Eternals villain i don't really remember that much about him i more remember like the foundation being such a threatening presence because of how big it was like it was like they had this huge dome and they were like kidnapped or not kidnapping but they had like all these super powered people trapped inside it like that was really impressive but this guy himself he's not really that memorable like they're really i don't really know why he was doing any of it so i'm definitely probably gonna put him in d before forgettable i feel like the villain of of e the Eternals movie was more the foundation than like a singular person. Next we have Shotaru. I'm probably gonna have, side note, I'm probably gonna have like the S character be decided at the very end uh, just because like it's hard to make a decision right now which one is my favorite. Yeah, Shotaru, oh, chef's kiss. What can I say about him? This guy, I love how like deep his character is in a way like i'm not saying like it's not like oh i come from a deep past he doesn't have honestly that's one of the best things about him he doesn't come from like this deep past or have like this uh this this sad backstory he's more or less a guy who kind of just got dropped into all of this but yet his character is so so out there and so bright that like it's able to shine among all these characters who do have like a deep connection with the overall w plot so something that i really like about him is the fact that he is like big-headed he's very sure of himself but at the same time he's not like sometimes he does get in his head a bit too much 
and he's very sensitive that's another thing like he acts like this macho man and like he acts like this cool-headed uh a detective this what, what is it hard-boiled detective but really like he's a sensitive guy and that's something that he tries to like no no of course i'm not i'm not sensitive what are you talking about but in truth he really is and that's like just layers on his character he's somebody that you want to follow because he is a good leader he does care about his clients he does care about his friends he will drag himself out of a hospital bed in order to you know come and try and rescue you uh so if i had to he's definitely gonna go in a for sure and maybe he's gonna end up in s i, I don't know uh, the next one that we have is Philip, and this is another really, really good character. If I had to choose, probably I like Shotaro more, but Philip, like, he is a character who uh, very surprises me. It's honestly probably like a sort of prejudice coming from me uh, that I definitely have to be. I understand that, but when I see like shows from like Japan or something, I am worried how they write certain kind of characters, you know. Uh, black characters or minority characters in general, uh, LGBT characters, and characters who are neurodivergent, who's, that, which seemingly is what Philip is. But this show definitely like kicked me in the head and proved that you know I really don't have that much to worry about. Uh, Philip is written so well, despite the fact that he is neurodivergent. I, I he I never looked at this series and went like, why are they making fun of him? um he why why is he uh treated like this just because um he's the way that he is uh like this is a character who yes he you know he has his quirks but like all the other characters it's he isn't just his quirks he isn't just neurodivergent his actions uh like it does affect some of the actions that he does but that isn't all he is so you're able to a lot I, I imagine a lot of people who do think like philip are able to look at him and be like oh my god he's a real person and i can relate to him this is great uh which i think is really really good uh, especially the more you learn about him the more you learn about his past i think the eternals movie was one of the some of the best for his character because that was when he found out the truth about his mom and he was like kind of looking everywhere for like a ma maternal figure and that affected a lot of his actions there um, besides that, like he's a very funny character, he's a very sweet character, um, and he's very cool, like he can get real cool. I really like his outfits too, like they really deck him out in some really good outfits. And he, he, got, he got a lot of like the poses similar to like Shotaru. Uh, he's a very cool character and I feel like he knows it. The actor who plays him, I know like goes on to play like a lot of really big roles. He's a really big actor in Japan. He did a really good job for being somebody so young, I feel like he did a really good job with this character. and. That's what makes me have to put him in A. Uh, these two guys, the two common writers, were excellent. They were able to play off each other really well. Um, there, are not, there aren't a lot of common writer series that have, you know, people sharing the spotlight. And while Shoto was probably like the main, main, uh, uh, not bad guy, good guy, the main, main character, these two do have to share this series in a, in a sense. And I feel like they do a really, really good job with it. So yeah, both of them, A for sure. Uh, the next one we have is Wakana, I believe her name is, and um, I like her character a lot. I liked I liked her character in the beginning a lot, and I was hoping that they would do more with her. But I feel like that after a, after like a few episodes, they kind of had her stuck. Like it looks like they were building up to something, but they never really did anything, and she was just stuck in the house like in between good guy and bad guy and then suddenly she became a bad guy seemingly out of nowhere i wasn't really happy with the way they made her a bad guy i feel like they kind of just made her okay switched it up and made her a bad guy i think they kind of explained it in the in like in the last episode or the second to last episode but i don't think that was enough if you ask me i might put her in c i don't dislike her character though but at the same time i don't know if b is i mean is b is i don't know if i should put it as b as like as okay or C. I'll put it at C for now, and then we'll see, because I don't like what they did with her character. The next one we have is Kirihiko's brother, I mean, sorry, Kirihiko's sister. She was only there for one or two, two episodes, and she had a pretty sad ending. Um, I mean, I can talk about her dopant form, but, like, I feel like I should save that for, like, the dopant, um, the dopant part of the, of the, of the video. So as a character herself, I don't really remember. I, I know she like, you know, she had this like whole revenge thing, which I think, you know, that's pretty cool. And she was going up against the bad guys for that, but she was using the good guys, which is like, puts her in a gray area. Um, her ending was pretty sad. 
like the the end at the end like the whole thing with revenge ended with her like wasn't it like losing her memories or something or going into a coma and then we just like never see her again and this this is a character i wasn't expecting to put anything for so i will probably put it for b i guess i don't know it's either b or d because i don't dislike her but like at the same time i think i remember her more than this guy I'll, I'll put her in d but i'll put her above him like i remember her somewhat but i don't remember anything like interesting that interesting about her character other than like the revenge stuff but that never really did anything for me you know like i don't know so yeah i'll, I'll put that in d for now uh the next one we have is eternal though i was a big fan of his character i love his powers even without um even without the suit like he's immortal he's He's basically a zombie, so he has like a little bit of strength as well. Uh, the whole thing with his backstory was also really sad. And I liked how the Eternal movie showed that he wasn't always like super evil. Instead, like it just like the, the experiment uh, affected his mind uh, and just eventually made him just ro like crazy. Uh, but he did have a side to him that was like who wanted to be free and wanted to be like a, his own person. Uh, so I'll put him in B. <laughs> I'll, def I'll put him in B. And then after that we have uh, Kirihiko himself. I wish that we got more with him because like they really started to get interesting with the writing with him um, when he was like, I think like in the two parter two parter where he died. Uh, like I liked how they connected him with Shoturu and showed that he actually really liked the city and he was the one that made the mascot for the city for uh, Futo. Uh, the whole thing with him and, and being the son-in-law like that was. That was okay too, but it was when he like when they showed the connection between him and Shotu. That was another thing, I guess. You know, what? I'll put his sister in B, because I I also like how she and him liked the like liked Futo together. Um, and I think they even expanded on it on his backstory after his death because didn't he and his sister come from like a group home or something like that? Like, yeah, I, I I'll, I'll put him in B. Uh, next we have Philip's mom. Sh shroud or shade i think it was shroud um this character i on i really liked how um she and her ex-husband were like on opposite sides of this like chess match between them two and like she was willing to do whatever it took manipulate anybody in order to defeat him i it, it kind of gave me like ospin salem vibes from ruby but like i think like cranked up to 100 like i liked how morally gray she was and i liked how she was willing to use people like that um i liked her design as well i kind of wish she had a common writer of her, of her own but i liked how she used that gun that was pretty cool so yeah i'll put her in a because she was a definitely a memorable character for sure i don't know what the, i mean the cat what do you want from me <laughs> where do i put the cat mick you get to go and be with everybody else uh next we have saiko saiko how can i put her in anything other than a they did mess i feel like they messed her up near the end they they messed her up when uh weather was was around because i felt like they made her simp for him so hard it was so bad i but then after that they they redeemed her when they had her like you know strike on her own and try and just like you know take revenge on everybody i like that but like we have like a bad bitch who's not afraid to kill her own ex-husband or kill her own husband and then later on use his power which was messed up but yeah I, we'll talk more about her dope and form later but yeah she was a really good character really good businesswoman um she had a pretty bad uh back like a good backstory but like a pretty sad backstory uh and I, that was another thing that i wish they fleshed out more but yeah i think i'll definitely put her in a because i think if you ask me she should have been the main bad guy you know she she's been preparing for it for so long and i think when you know the world was taking everything away from her she should have been the one to try and get back on top and try and take everything from the world but that's just me uh they did kind of make her damsel in distressy uh and like sort of like the the wife character near the end but i think like everything else that happened in the series helps elevate her her status up to a ryubi was hyped up so much in this in this series i feel like it's such a shame that i'm not gonna put him in a i don't feel like like he got little screen time here and there and like the, the little screen time that he had was good i feel like like i like the way he was calm all the time and he even saw some like things that should have been taken more seriously as a joke it really helped him like you know gain that like that 
that menacing aura. But like the final fight I feel like wasn't there for me and he wasn't even really the main main bad guy in the end. I, I can't put him in A. I'll put him in B but I could have put him in A I feel like if he was a better final villain. Uh, at least to me like he he caused nearly if not everything nearly everything no i'm pretty sure everything like he even caused the death of boss's friend you know and caused the like the change of the the whole like thing with like the traitor and all that stuff in the o special like he did so much but i feel like they didn't stick the landing for him um and they didn't even make him the final final bad guy so i feel like that was that that was a you know they dropped the ball on that one a ryuji he is a good character, yeah. I mean, I, I think he's a really good um, a really good opposite for Shoturu. Like, the way that he doesn't like this city, and, or he didn't like the city, and he was, like, a lot more stern and everything, and he was more, like, the badass that Shoturu wanted to be, but without that heart, without that, without that, without that important part of, of Shoturu's character, like, it made him cold and heartless. And I liked how he was like killing him, nearly killing himself to get that goal of getting to weather. I'm gonna put him in A. I think all of the main characters, like these four main characters, definitely belong in the A status. They did a really good job with this cast. Uh, and then after that, we have Weather. And he honestly was a better villain than um, than Ryubi. I think he should have. There's so many people that could have been the final villain for him for uh, for the show. But he was a really good villain for where he was. Uh, he just showed a different kind of power with Weather, uh, which we'll talk about later on. But like, I also like just his obsession of Gaia memories and how he's like, we don't need the belts. The belts only uh, slow us down. We should be sticking that stuff into our bodies uh, and just, you know, raw dog, raw dogging our, our, our dope forms. Um, and he dresses really nice. He has the umbrella. You know, his, his experiments, like I said, are really, really cool. So I'm going to put him in A. Uh, and then we have the boss. And I know I meme that he like, he's this like really, really great character. It's like, oh my God, he's, he's so badass. And I think he is badass. And I think he's a great character. But I feel like we need a little bit more from him. Like a, more of a backstory, more character. I know he's dead, but like, I feel like I, I wish that we could have gotten more from him. Like maybe some of his troubles. Uh, his fears and everything like that. Uh, so I'll put him in B. He's a good character for sure. I'll put him like at high B. He's a good character. He's close to A, but I feel like he really does need more. And I guess it's not really me memeing because he is a badass, but like, like, I don't know. As a character himself, I feel like they needed to do a little bit more to put him in that A category. Now that we have this guy and this guy, he, he was the final villain of Kamen Rider W and i was not really i barely really remember that much about him and i don't know he, he's okay i guess uh i'll put him in i'll put him in i'll put him in c yeah i, I honestly uh, you know what i didn't really like him that much <laughs> i didn't like it i don't like how basically it was just like you know trying to simp over psycho and like i don't even know besides that i don't even remember what he was doing like that's that's all i really remember about him like that that's it like i don't know the ugh, yeah not a big fan uh but if i had to choose an s character who would it be probably shotaru i know it's like oh but he's the main character isn't it obvious it's like picking naruto as your s character but he's really really cool i like him i think they did a, i think they did a really good job uh making him making a main character here like honestly he's probably my favorite common writer character main character to date right now so this is probably going to be the one that I like skip a lot of them, uh, mainly because uh, there are a lot of dopants, and I'm only going to really be talking about the ones that, you know, really, really uh, catch my eye. So let's try and rapid fire these ones because I know there are a lot. So here we go. The first one we have is Magma. I'm a big fan of Magma. Honestly, he was the first Kamen Rider W villain. Now, the reason why I really like him is because I just came out of Kamen Rider Kiva, and I was not a big fan of their minor villains, like their weekly villains. There just wasn't uh, any color in them. And when I saw like the, the the orange flames coming from this character, I was really excited because I was like, yes, finally, a villain with, co uh, with color. And that really stuck to me. So even though he only had one episode, he was still able to leave a really big impact uh, and really just like set a set a path for how i felt about the dopants uh future dopants of the series so i'm gonna put him in a 
The second one we have is T-Rex. Now, this is another character that we only had one episode with, uh, but I really did like uh, her second form. Well, her first form was really dopey uh, with her, like, you know, gigantic head. Her her T her giant mechanical T-Rex form was definitely a lot cooler. Um, so I will put her in B as, you know, okay. Now, this one, we have two who are the same ones. This is the Anomalocris, I think it's called. Uh, this is the sniper one. Now, the reason why I want to pay attention to this one is because this one set the mood for Kamen Rider W, I feel like. Like, when we saw that these guys, like, killed the the daughter uh the, the sorry not the daughter but the father of like a little girl that was really really dark and i think that was the episode that made me go oh this series can get dark okay i guess i have to get ready for that so i'm gonna put this one as a because it really left an impact for me as far as like once again setting the mood for this for this series all right so next we have virus now the one the reason why i'm a big fan of this is for one thing the episode that it came out of was was really good i like the whole like we're getting revenge and getting justice what is the difference how are they the same how are they different um and i liked how that that you know kind of like showed us more of Shotru's character um but something that i really liked about virus is the fact that apparently we didn't even get to see its final its, its full power there's something about that that i really like that mystery like the sonozakis were talking about how virus could destroy a whole city if it wanted to uh, but because like it was being used by somebody who was in a coma it was affecting its power level uh on top of that there was also this one good scene with this like really good ost uh, that was playing and i just really like i remember that scene a lot so that's that thing just like stuck to my memory but yeah i think that was a really good um a really good guy in memory which is why i mean a really good uh guy in memory a really good dope in which is why i'm putting it in a so arms is another character that i think is really pretty cool um one for the one reason is because he was working with the uh, sonozaki family in order to get philip um and on uh, and also uh w and on top of that, he has some pretty good power sets, I think. But yeah, I'm probably going to put him in B. Triceratops was another really good um, doping for sure. I like the person who was using her. Uh, I'm us using it, and I really like that episode too. Uh, but on top of that, like it just has a really cool design. I think he also has a staff. And his second form is also really, really cool. She like was able to turn into a gigantic like dinosaur, similar to like the T-Rex. So I, I really like that power set, and I think... For, because of that, I'm going to put it in A. I think that's a pretty good place for it. Liar, I can't 100% remember. Um, but I do remember him having, like, some pretty powerful powers, I think. Wasn't he the one that, like, he made a lie and then that lie would come true, right? That's a pretty cool power set. But I don't remember that much about him. So I'm not going to put him in D. I'll put him in B. Because I think I remember his power set. And his power set was honestly really, really cool. Uh, but the next one we have is Puppeteer. And I don't, I don't know how many dopants I have that I dislike, but I definitely dislike this character. I'm sorry, it's just like the dopant is just not that cool to me. And it came from like a two-parter that I really disliked. And it's a shame because it was an Akiko uh, two-parter too. But I just can't stand this dopant at all. It's just so boring to me. So yeah, I'm going to put him in C for sure. Another one I'm going to put in C is the Invisible uh one I, I like the character that uses it but the invisible powers isn't really that impressive like look they, they didn't even put anything here because there's nothing to put she's invisible uh the dream dopin this was the nightmare dopin actually i really like the nightmare dopin's design and its power the fact like when it when it took uh philip and shotru into that dream I really was a big fan of that, and I, I really like the creativity there. And also, like I said, the design looks really creepy too. So I'm going to put this one in A. The next one we have is Zone, and this one shared a uh, two-parter with, um, what was it, uh, Beast. I put Beast in D because, I mean, the only thing I really remember about it is the fact that he's really strong. But uh, Zone, she had a really, really cool and interesting power set. And I wish we had more dopants like her because, like, for one thing, like, her body was definitely different from all the other characters and on top of that like her powers like the whole board looking like um like the whole like chessboard looking uh like power thing that she had was also really really cool so i'll put her in uh a for originality yesterday was honestly a really good one too i remember that one that that was the one with the sister uh she, i really like how you have to like plan in advance if you want to use this power like i liked how she tricked shotru into doing all this stuff in order for her to 
uh, use W in order to get revenge on the Sonozaki family. I really like that like five head way of using uh, yesterday's power. So I'm gonna put this one in A too. This one, this one is a really big one. This was the Quetzalcoatlus. <laughs> um, I, hopefully I didn't butcher it that much. I already know I butchered it. Um, but this one, this one is a big CG monster. Uh, the thing is though, I can't put it in A because for one thing, I don't like the Gaia memory. I feel like it's too big. The wings are just too much. It's only there for like one, for like one episode. And like, I know the CG of the past isn't really that good, but this is probably like the worst looking CG in, in the whole series. Uh, like it just looks like a mess. Like the other series, the other, the other CG, like it doesn't look the best. Like it, it looks like a PlayStation 2 game, but like it doesn't look like a mess if that makes sense so i'm probably gonna put this one in c hopper i really liked hopper because one for one thing i liked how hopper was like a, was like an enforcer for the for the museum I, I really wish that we had more of them um and also i liked her power too i liked her also when she was just her human form and she was weird and like trying to offer everybody grasshoppers and she was also pretty deadly even without the Gaia memory so yeah i'm gonna put this one in i'll put it one put this one in b old you know old has a pretty good power set uh i don't think it's like that i don't think it's a worthy but at the same time i i do like how like they have, he has that scary power of making people old so yeah i'm probably gonna put him in um I put them in B. Got the grunts. We can't forget about the grunts. These guys have it rough. You know, they they have they have Gaia memories, but they're the ones that always get kicked around. You know what? I'll put them in A because they go through so much. They, it's like an honorable mention. You know, we gotta we we gotta we have to pour one for for these poor, hardworking, probably low-paying grunts that we that always get their ass kicked in every episode they appear in. But now we get into the Sonozakis now. So this is when it gets pretty interesting. Starting with Ryubi. I like the first time that we saw Ryubi's doping form. It just like gave off this e this dark energy. Like the whole world felt like it was crying, and I really really liked it. Uh, the final fight, it it's it was kind of hard for I guess it was kind of hard for them to have like a really good final fight because like he his he looked really clunky in that in that in that outfit or in that suit or in that you know whatever that form. Uh, but I did like the giant monster that came out of his head. That was really cool. Uh, I'll put him in B. Uh, I, 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 don't, I definitely don't dislike it, but it's not the best, I think. Uh, meanwhile, I have uh, Saiko. Saiko's was honestly really, really cool. That was the first dopant that we really saw. Uh, her energy blasts are really cool. Um, it's kind of hard to have like a proper fight because like she doesn't have any legs, so they have to CG all that stuff. Um, but I think I'll probably put him, put her in B as well. And then after that, Psycho, Psycho's her first form. I'm honestly not that big of a fan of, um, uh, maybe because we don't really, I mean, we see it. I feel like enough, uh, but like the cannon arm, like it doesn't, I don't think it really bends. So like it has that awkward moment movement there. Um, uh, I liked how she's able to like reform herself. Uh, but you know, it's okay. I guess, uh, I'll put it in, uh, a though. And then after that, we have freaking Kirihiko's uh dope and form nascar or nazca uh this one i really really like i like the sword i like the speed that he has the outfit looks really really good i'm gonna put this one in a for sure and that's that we have mixed dope and form this one honestly i'm a big fan of probably not the best in in the museum uh but really really good really really up there for sure so definitely a just like i love the blood that's on his teeth and like the the feral look that he has uh which makes sense because he's a cat uh and then after his super speed as well and like just his animal movement i think they did a really good job with that one a uh, weather chef's kiss overpowered as hell um really good out really good look I mean, really good action scenes as well. Like, just really, really great. Definitely A material. I really like Saiko's second outfit, though. Her Nazca. Her, uh, yeah, her second dopant, the Nazca. I like how she upgraded it. And she has, like, similar abilities to her original outfit or her original form. Um, with, like, some, you know, Nazca power-ups as well. So, like, I like that combination a lot. I wish that we got to see more of it. But I'm definitely going to put it in A. And then after that, we have like the the Mother Earth Psycho's uh, second form um, 
look here this one is going to go in a as well because i like how overpowered it is as well oh so yeah probably a is probably the best place to put it and then we have the foundations uh i think it's called utopia i really like utopia honestly i like utopia more than i like the person using utopia um i like the regal look to him like he looks like a regal general you know and i like this power as well the fact that he can like you know make people float and stop them and everything like that he does look like a good final villain I just wish, for one thing, I wish the f the fight was okay, if I remember correctly. Uh, but I wish that we got to see more of him. I wish he was built up more. And I wish we could see this form a lot more throughout the series. Uh, but I am going to put him in A, because he's really, really good. So now we have the dopants from the Eternals movie. These are the ones that like are based off of the guy memories that we usually know about. Like, you know, Wind, Heat, uh, Lunar, uh, so on and so forth. So it was really cool seeing like the dopant versions of them. For starters, Wind, we didn't really get to see much of her, but I think her outfit looked really, really cool and really, really well done, especially for a uh, dopant that we don't, we didn't even get to see much of. So I really like the outfit. I wish we got to see more of it. I'll put him in B, mainly because of how, you know, how short she was on screen uh, as her dopant form. Uh, Heat was another really, really good one. I'll put her in A because we did get to see a lot of her and uh she's like you know she has that like you know slim sort of fighting like look to her uh and her power set was also really really cool uh lunar the character was kind of annoying not gonna lie but um i did like the design for him uh, i'll put him in b metal i'm not as impressed with i'll be honest uh just he doesn't look as appealing as the other characters uh i'll put him in c uh, and that's why we have Trigger, who looks pretty cool. Um, I'll put him in B. Um, not not for any, like, you know, bad reason or anything. It's just that's how much I feel like screen time was given to him. And, like, I can't really remember his power set that much. But, like, just from his looks, he looks pretty cool. So I'm going to put him in B. And then after that, we have the Traitor, Boss's ex-best friend, who honestly had a pretty scary, like, spider powers. The whole, like, bombing thing, like, and you know keeping people away from the from those that they love it was pretty tragic uh i'm gonna put him in a for sure because just because like his power set was also was honestly really 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 cool uh and after that we have the bat girl i mean like there isn't really much i know that she was like the first ever dopant i think uh but besides that there isn't really isn't anything cool about her i'll put her in d because like she just isn't really that memorable for me well, I don't really remember Eternals villains character that much. I do remember his dopant form. Uh, I thought that I thought it was a pretty cool form. I, it, it gave us a lot of really good action scenes. I'll put him in B. And finally, we have uh, Ryuji's of uh, movie um villain the, his he has two forms he has his first form and his second form the first form was honestly really forgettable uh but the second form i really do remember all the missiles and like the like the halo thing on like you know on the um on the guy's back i thought it was also it's also really cool i'm gonna actually put him in a because he was a pretty good uh final villain for that movie uh, but yeah, this is my this is my tier list for the dopants. If I had to choose my favorite dopant, it's probably gonna be uh, Saiko's Nazca. It's just a perfect mix of those two care of those two dopants, um, with its energy blast, its wings, its speed, all of it. I just think if I had to choose a dopant for myself, it probably would be hers. Is my top pick for dopants? That is my tier list for all of the dopants my tier list for my tier list for the characters and my tier list for the common writers i would love to see you got your guys's um tier list i'll leave a link uh for all of them and i'll leave a link for all of them in the uh comment section down below if you guys want to leave a link to your uh your own uh tier list your own common writer w tier list i'd be happy to see them for sure uh i think this was a really fun way to go back into the series and just you know remember a lot of the scenes in my head and and just remember all these characters and at least try and remember because there are some that i clearly don't remember uh, or like just don't care about there were a lot of dopants that were reused those ones like a lot of them i just put in d um but yeah like there were some there's some characters there was one character here that i don't really remember that much there were some that i liked some that i disliked it was great Overall, though, Kamen Rider W at the end of the day was a really, really good series. Really loved it. 
Uh, and it was great to go back and just look at all these characters and remember them again. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, tell me what you guys thought about the episode down in the comment section down below. Tell me what you guys thought about my uh, tier list. And I will see you guys next time. Until then, 